let's get started. Super glue. If you don't have this tube in your home, that means either you never broke a thing in your life or you don't have a house and you sleep on the road. It was in 1942 that the world was at war. Inventor Harry Coover was attempting to create clear plastic gun sights for the U.S. Army. In this process, he accidentally created a sticky compound, which was cyanoacrylate. They thought that it was too sticky and set that compound aside. It is like ignoring a beautiful, curvy, intelligent, and rich woman for a girl whom you saw in your dreams and who you think you saw last year in a mall. At that time, they ignored the curvy woman. I mean, that sticky compound. Fast forward to 1951, when Coover rediscovered the same compound while researching heat-resistant polymers for jet canopies. He discovered that this cyanoacrylate adhesive doesn't require heat or pressure to stick and hold the item together. Thus, he patented his invention as alcohol-catalyzed cyanoacrylate adhesive compositions. Try saying this name instead of superglue next time you visit a shop or a mall. He and the Eastman team then repackaged the adhesive for sale as Eastman 910. Later, they changed the name to superglue, which became popular, and Mr. Coover became Mr. Superglue. Although it was only for sticking two objects together, some used it innovatively. The superglue spray was used during the Vietnam War on the injured soldiers to stop the bleeding until the soldier got conventional treatment. It saved many lives at that time, and Mr. Coover was happy to see that his accidental invention helped them. Pacemaker Wilson Greatbatch, an American engineer, was working on a project to develop a device to record heart rhythms in 1956. While working on the oscillator, which he built from scratch, he installed the wrong resistor in it. Because of this, the oscillator produced a series of electric pulses rather than a steady signal. After hearing the sound, he realized that the sound produced by impulses was quite similar to the rhythm of the human heartbeat. This gave him the idea to create a device to regulate the heartbeat of people with heart conditions. So, to make this device suitable for implants, he continued to refine the device but you know you can't just walk into a hospital and present your newly invented device and ask them to place it inside someone's chest. It doesn't work like that. You have to prove things first, and then people will believe in you. So, in 1960, he successfully implanted the pacemaker into a dog, at least on record. He took that device to many companies, but they were skeptical of it. But that didn't stop him. He somehow managed to convince a small company to manufacture the device. Soon. The device was approved by the FDA in 1962, and since then, it has become a standard treatment for people with heart conditions. Great Batch's accidental discovery revolutionized the treatment of heart rhythm disorders and saved countless lives. Now how does it work? It delivers electric pulses or currents to your heart muscle. It mimics the normal signals given by your brain to your heart. Then these muscles react to it, and your heart beats. Velcro. In 1941, Swiss engineer George de Mestral was on a hunt in Jura Mountain, Switzerland. He also took his dog with him. While walking through the grass and bushes, he noticed that some cockle burrs were stuck to his pants and on his dog's fur. Its hooks were attached to the tiny fibers of his pants. It had a good grip. This sparked an idea in his mind. He went back and then observed those burrs under the microscope. He found out that it had many hook-like fibers all over it. When it comes into contact with the surface, which has tiny fibers or threads, it gets stuck in that hook. Just like the cat claws hold the surface of the couch, or the visitor's kid grabs your favorite stuff in your house with no intention to put it down unless you snatch it. Taking inspiration from this observation, he invented Velcro as a new hook-and-loop fastener. It provided a new option to fasten and unfasten two surfaces repeatedly. Initially, he struggled to get money out of it, but he didn't know what destiny had written for him. During that period, NASA was looking for something that could easily be warped around objects, hang small things in space, secure instruments, and for many other things. They found out about George's company, and it was the perfect thing they wanted. That's how his innovations started to get recognized and became profitable. Today, Velcro is still used in clothing, packaging, footwear, and the medical field. After hearing this innovation story, I remembered when I came into contact with Cuckle Burrs when I was in school. 
As a kid, I understood that it gets stuck on school bags, my friend's hair, and my teacher's beard. That's it. I lacked that creative thinking. Otherwise, I would have invented Velcro again. Dynamite. Alfred Noble was a young guy because he was not old at the time. Yes, this is the guy who established the Nobel Prize Awards. This is his story. His father, Emmanuel Nobel, was an inventor and engineer. He was also a manufacturer of explosives. Alfred was also influenced by his father. He also started to look into the business of explosives. In the early 1800s, explosives were manufactured using gunpowder and nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is a volatile substance, and it could cause an accidental explosion due to sudden changes in motion, temperature, and friction. In 1864, Nobel's young brother Emile died in an explosion at their Stockholm factory. So, there was a need for better controlled explosives. Still, they kept their work with the same material as before. In 1865, Alfred Noble was working in his lab near the factory. While working, he accidentally dropped the vial of nitroglycerin on the floor and shattered into pieces. Vial was supposed to explode when it crashed onto the floor, but that didn't happen. He was surprised. He noticed that the sawdust on the floor had absorbed the liquid. He found out that the sawdust was mixed with dirt from the embankments surrounding his factory buildings. These embankments were made of diatomaceous earth, which is the fossil accumulation of silica from dead microscopic single-celled marine algae. Nitroglycerin was stabilized when mixed with diatomaceous earth. He got the control over that substance. Nobel then patented his discovery and named it dynamite. With this discovery, he made his fortune and earned a bulk of money worldwide. He died in 1896, but before his death, he had already made his will and established the Nobel Prize for people with discoveries in the fields of science and literature. He donated almost 94% of his wealth to the Nobel Prizes. The strange fact is that the main thought behind the award was not to appreciate the people. Alfred Nobel's main reason for establishing the Nobel Prizes was likely his desire to leave a positive legacy and to be remembered for something other than his invention of dynamite, which had been primarily used in warfare and destruction. Matchstick In 1826, British chemist John Walker was working in his lab. He was stirring some chemicals with the stick. While stirring, he noticed there was a dried lump at the end of the stick, so he did what any normal person would do when gum sticks to their shoes. He tried to scrape it off, but it coughed fire. Well, he didn't panic. He realized that he had invented something that could break the internet. He sold a few sticks in a library, which was like the internet at the time. He also provided sandpaper to rub the stick on to ignite the matchstick. People told him to patent the invention, but he didn't. Due to this, someone else copied his product and sold it. Walker's matchsticks were bigger, while the person who copied his invention made them small and handy. Although Walker didn't become rich, his invention was a game-changer for people. Penicillin In 1928, Dr. Alexander Fleming used to work at St. Mary's Hospital in London. He came back to the lab after two weeks of vacation in Scotland. In the lab, he found mold growing on an accidentally contaminated Petri dish of Staphylococcus bacteria. Upon examining some colonies of Staphylococcus aureus, Dr. Fleming noted that a mold called Penicillium notatum had contaminated his Petri dishes. Watching under the microscope, he found out that the mold was preventing the growth of bacteria around it. This finding was then analyzed, and over time, penicillin was created. The discovery of penicillin made a huge impact on the medical field. At that time, a normal wound could become fatal because there were no powerful antibacterial drugs. If a bullet hit a soldier's palm and he got infected, chopping the hand was the only option for treating the wound. So, in World War II, penicillin helped reduce the number of deaths and amputations among the troops. Still today, it is a widely used antibiotic in the world. Teflon. It was the year 1938. Roy Puckett, a 27-year-old American chemist, was working for DuPont. He was trying to invent a better coolant gas in the lab. So, he and his assistant gathered the gas known as tetrafluoroethylene and cooled and pressurized it in a canister overnight. The next day, they returned and assembled the needed apparatus. 
They opened the valve of that cylinder to let the gas flow under its pressure, but nothing came out. Gas was gone. Seeing this, they were shocked. So, they unscrewed the valve of the cylinder and held the cylinder upside down. The powder fell from inside the cylinder. Still confused about what happened, they cut the cylinder in half and found a powdered coating inside the cylinder's surface. Rather than throwing that aside, then they tested it and found out that it has properties like heat resistance and corrosion resistance. They named that substance Teflon. Due to these properties, Teflon is widely used in cookware coating, but it is also used in electrical insulation, medical devices, and as a coating for certain types of surgical equipment. That's enough for today's video. We'll meet again. Bye.